Excellent. Thank you. Well, let's let's begin here. Um, unfortunately, um, I still I still wouldn't mind being able to get one of our computers to work so I could show you what it looks like live. Unfortunately, all we have here is our slides working. Uh, but <clears throat> you know, yeah, please, Leah. Yeah, let's. Um, So, so yeah, um, do we have a handheld mic? Uh, you can use this one here. Okay, so um, a bit of background. Uh, this is something a number of us have been working on for a number of years here. Uh, who, who here has heard of Our World and Data? A few folks, yeah. So, so Our World and Data is, is an NGO out of Oxford in the UK. They do amazing work around data visualization. Um, and, you know, right now we within the Wikimedia movement, we do a horrible job around data visualization. Um, our last data visualiz visualization tool has died and uh, it's been dead for a number of months. Uh, so this is a look at you know, how we can make improvements um, uh, with respect to what we can show within the, the media uh, wiki world. Okay, so that button there. So um, a little more history. So for years, we've tried to take the grapher extension and improve the grapher extension so it can show heat maps of various healthcare conditions over time. Um, we were able to get that to work. We basically took the data from our world and data. We imported it into Commons under the data tab. And then we loaded that material from the data tab into our grapher tool. Um, unfortunately, we never got our grapher tool to work nearly as well as the tools that our world and data hosts. Um, so Yuri, when he is at the foundation, he built this, fu um, this functionality um, into Grapher. And then when Yuri left the foundation a number of years ago, he wasn't replaced by anybody to keep the tools up to date. And thus, you know, I think that's one of the reasons why Grapher is now currently dead. Um, so what we have built, specifically Tim Moody, one of my collaborators, has taken these um, more than 3,000 interactive graphs built by um, our world and data, and he's imported them onto the Wikimedia cloud. And what this allowed us to do is it allowed us to make a number of adjustments to their material so that it formats within um, all the requirements we have within the Wikimedia movement, i.e., you know, we removed their logo, we made their graph so it would take up half a screen or a third of a screen so it would format well within a, a Wikipedia article. And, and then we funded an extension that allowed the pulling of these graphs from the Wikimedia cloud into uh, a media wiki install. And then, you know, we looked at, you know, are there other Wikipedias who are interested in having this material? And, um, you know, the Basque Wikipedia community uh, saw this and they were excited about having this here usable within Basque Wikipedia itself. Um, so the next step was the security review process. And that is sort of where, you know, things have sort of run into roadblocks. Um, so let's, um, can we show this computer right here? Perfect. Okay, so let's let's take a look at what um, and let's make that bigger for everyone. So Control Plus. Uh, so this is this is you know our own wiki that we host um, at at uh, Wiki Project Med and where we've been experimenting with all of these details um, and here we can load up uh, you know sort of our efforts around our world and data and we can take a look at what the functionality is. Um, so here in the corner, we have loading the interactive graph on um, the schizophrenia and how the rates of schizophrenia vary around the world. And, you know, some of the great functionality we have, you know, you can put your cursor over any part of the map and it will, you know, pop up a little mini graph showing you how rates of that condition has changed over time. You know, other nice features is, you know, Europe is awfully small. You really can't make out details of Europe within the big map. So what you can do is you can click the drop down and it will zoom into and highlight Europe 
um, it will highlight Asia or highlight Africa. So, you know, for those smaller countries out there, um, uh, you know, not just Canada, the United States and Russia can see information uh, within this grapher tool. Um, and then if you, you know, if you take a country like, you know, France, for example, you can click on it and it'll give you, you know, the rates over time from their data set. Um, and then you can flip back to the map. Um, and there are more than 3,000 of these interactive graphs. Um, and these interactive graphs um, are on all sorts of topics from climate change, from industry. Uh, there's a lot of them pertaining to healthcare. The group, um, Our World and Data, has done a lot of work specifically around the sustainable development goals. So they have a great deal of material looking at how well we're succeeding with respect to those sustainable de development goals. And then if you want to look a little bit more at the back end, um, so here's asthma prevalence, for example. Um, you know, you can see the attribution. One thing all Wikipedians care about is what's the license. All of this material is under open licenses. Um, the data is generally under a CCBY license. All the software is under an open license. Um, so all of, the, all of the work that they do is compatible with our movement. All we need to do is figure out the few steps required to bring what they, the great work that they do into our projects. Um, so if you click down here, what this will do is this will bring us over to, um, you look up the top there and you see ourworldanddata.wikimediacloud.org. So, you know, we basically mirrored their website here. Um, um, excellent. So that's, that's basically a, a whirlwind tour of what we have built. Uh, do you want to switch back to the, um, the online slides, please? you want to stay? No, nothing special. I mean, uh, we were interested in this, and once graph has died, it's even more interesting to have this. Yeah, so, you know, with respect to why all this work is rele relevant to us, you know, this will allow us to bring, you know, more interactive content to Wikipedia. Um, you know, we did a survey many years ago, it must be eight or ten now, of our readership, and we asked our readership, what should we at the Wikimedia Foundation, what should we within the media, you know, the Wikimedia movement be working on? And their response was, we want more interactive content. We want more videos, we want more illustrations, we want more um, uh, ability to engage with graphs. And this is something that was requested eight to ten years ago. Um, and, you know, here we are sort of still working on making a few steps forwards. And we, of course, have encountered a few steps backward as well. I would like to notice that it's not only medical content that is with uh, MD Wiki has. There are a lot of contents about economy and lots of contents about uh, climate change and ecology. So this is it's not only relevant to one topic. I mean, One Health and ETC, everything is relevant to medicine actually. But uh, we, we can also cover other topics. And there are a lot of things like, uh, I don't know, uh, econo economical impact or climate extinction, these kind of things that are very relevant and, and are in CSV and are free and we could be sewing. So, you know, what are the next steps? What are the roadblocks we're currently facing? This is sort of some of them, the best I understand them. I'm not a technical person. I'm a, a medical physician. Um, from what I understand from the technical folks of the Wikimedia Foundation, is the graphs would need to be moved from where they're, they currently live on the Wikimedia cloud to living on um, the production servers um, before they could be usable within Wikipedia itself. Uh, before this material could move to the production servers, there would need to be Wikimedia Foundation staff and Wikimedia Foundation staff time for, you know, to, for ongoing maintenance, and we would need them to be involved with um, uh, managing this project. Uh, so I've reached out to a number of Wikimedia Foundation staff, including Selena, um, our, our new head of product and technology, um, and, you know, of course, the foundation stretched, all the staff departments are stretched, um, and, you know, right now the foundation is sort of trying to narrow its focus, uh, but we're hoping that there's, there's interest within our movement as a whole for this sort of interactive content, and therefore, hopefully, um, um, that can help convince, you know, maybe there's a little bit of help for a few of these side projects for stuff our readers want, for stuff that our editor communities want um, for next steps. 
One possible workaround we're looking at, so, um, you know, as I mentioned, this could go on the production servers, uh, but, you know, Wiki Voyage does something interesting, and what you can see here is you can see a, a, a sort of a map that comes from Wiki Voyage, and, you know, they show the, the OpenStreetMap tiles that come from Wikimedia Foundation servers, but they also give the opportunity for people to um, have map overlays that come from external sources. Now, you know, that's of questionable permissibility within our movement, but we currently have a project doing that. And we're thinking of maybe something similar for our world and data, at least to start, where we can show a static image of our world and data coming from commons. And then when people click on that static image, like a little play logo, um, it then brings them over to an interactive version of that after they uh, accept that, you know, they're gonna be sharing some of their IP information with, with an external data source. Um, similar to what? We talked about SaaS, also. I mean, is well, that yes. Wikimedia but, Cloud. Yeah, it's going to be Wikimedia. <laughs> so Wikimedia Cloud is deemed to be an external data source. Um, only stuff on production servers is deemed to be not an external data source. So, and then other efforts we want to do is, you know, we want to make these graphs multilingual. So currently they only exist in English. Um, our world and data doesn't actively plan to make them multilingual at this point in time. This is a way we could give back to that NGO that has done this amazing work by making, you know, we have an amazing language community. We could help make their material multilingual. So that, that is sort of a whirlwind tour of, of, of what we're working on with respect to um, our world, our collaboration with our world and data and graphing. Are there questions from the audience? I think, I think we're, um, <clears throat> I imagine we're out of time, but maybe we have a chance for one or two questions. Or suggestions. Or suggestions, or, you know, we, we welcome help. <laughs> <laughs> Technical people. This is a comment, not a question, and you probably already know this, but just for the benefit of the audience, the foundation is still trying to figure out the situation with Graph. It might come back, it might not be possible to bring it back. The, the product manager of the editing team, Peter Pilberg, is thinking about it. So if, if you have comments on that, or especially if, if you had an unusual use case that was filled by the graph extension, uh, then you should get in contact with Peter and make sure he knows about it because he is evaluating all the use cases that extension field to decide what to do about its feature. Perfect. Yeah, you know, thank you. You know, I'd be happy to use the graph extension if they can make it as beautiful as what our world and data does. Yeah. <laughs> Sam? Um, yeah, that, that was really interesting. Um, I've just been looking at the, the, the our world and data uh, GitHub repos. Um, and they do document a little bit of their process of producing this and the uh, decisions that they've made, um, the ways in which they've built this visualization tool really integrated into their database and their workflows and things. And they do say, we don't recommend you use this as a general visualization tool for your own stuff because we make product decisions about it that serve our own needs. Um, which is disappointing in a way, but also I, I, I feel like it points to this thing of, well, maybe Wikimedia needs to do a similar thing. Um, you know, I think in this case, um, it, it sounds like they're optimizing for, for particular types of data. And if we were loading uh, any data into any visualization, it, it doesn't work very well. But if we l l reduce our scope, maybe we have a better chance of building something that works for just what we need it to. Technically, most of the CSVs that they serve, they have like a country code and a year code. So it's pretty standardized. And you can do something similar. I mean, you, you, you can even change that. It's, it's pretty standardized because there are country codes is an ISO code. Yes, we can do whatever we want, but uh, they have like some codes for Europe, Antarctica, or oceans, or these kind of things. And once you have figured out, it's, it's pretty easy to reuse that. Even knowing that it's only for that use, you can do whatever you want, but uh, it's 3,000 
<laughs> more visualizations and it could be a, something good to know like how do we standardize that because we can do something similar to standardize do we have another talk coming up after this yeah okay so um come on up for whoever's uh, speaking next